Welcome to Fit Farm, a show dedicated to creating a better life through fitness and the grappling arts. I'm Joseph Aronson. I'm Jackie Baker. It's time to get jacked. Hey guys, I'm with uh, Forsaken Warrior, Steve Johnson. Actually, Yo. is that, you know what, before I even get into it, I think you said that's more of a brand than actually your name, or is that what you want um, to be called it now, was right? a brand it is me now okay. which is also a brand as well again <laughs> right and his girlfriend lauren yeah lauren, lauren. Yep. yep yep i Hi, have guys. bb pro lauren can we get I, that title i'm sorry hey, yes you'll get to that yeah. no. and, and our co-host jackie baker <laughs> so is that like a like a necessity thing when you're on instagram you have to put ifbb pro in front of your name is it no but everyone does and it's funny because there was a competition recently um a big the biggest one of the year uh nationals and takes place in Miami, and uh, I was following it like pretty closely, mostly just like on the internet, social media, yeah. not like anything being streamed, uh-huh. but just trying to get like you know pictures and results and whatnot. And uh, as soon as anybody like was crowned IFBB Pro, it's like you go to their Instagram and boom, yeah, right like away. it was. I like yeah. I gave like at least like a two day grace period, uh-huh. right. and I don't have it in my like name. It's, it's better it, than it's the under, people that write future underneath. IFBB yeah. Pro, you know, at least. You know, at least you got everybody. the title. That's everywhere. Future. Future this. Future that. Yeah. Well, let's let's make it happen, right? And then we'll talk future about Future Mr. It. Lauren Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. Does, does she know yet or no? <laughs> she does now. <laughs> <laughs> right? So we could give everybody a quick background. I know you've probably told your story a million times. Yep. and. and, and Probably never gets old though, right? <laughs> um, I've just, rehearsed it many yeah, times. Yeah, right, so you've got it down. But just, I mean, for the very few people out there that might not know it, could you just give us a quick rundown about yourself and then you next, Lauren? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, my name's Steve Johnson. Most people know me in the uh, social media world as Forsaken Warrior. Um, I'm sponsored by a few companies. I'm a power lifter from Chicago, first of all. Um, I was an ex uh, officer with the Cook County Sheriff's Department, which is a uh, sheriff's Department there surrounding the city of Chicago. Um, co-owner of the gym, Chicago Barbell Compound, and uh, I don't know, master coach extraordinaire. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Training uh, strength athletes and stuff now is basically what I do, and um, uh, one of the highest uh, level power lifters and got some records and stuff like that too. Yeah, Most people know me for my deadlifting. That's what I was going to ask. If you could yeah. just give me a breakdown of the of the pretty much the numbers, the stats, the 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 big things people kind of know you for. Uh, yeah, so uh, best to date was um, my best competition to date was in August of, um, it was called Boss of Bosses 4. Um, I had done the year prior Boss of Bosses 3, and that was like my breakout meet. That's where everybody basically figured out who I was. And um, totaled a really high total in a lower weight class. Decided to go up to one weight class to uh, 308 pounds. I, I don't know if you could tell or not. but <laughs> uh, Yeah, yeah, this man's big, just so you know. When I say big, I mean like big husky that's yeah i've like, always been known as husky yeah, yeah. He's, he's a full order he's a full meal you know um, appetizer <laughs> i uh so i went to boss bosses four this year and i squatted an 832 pound squat i benched 518 wow. and i deadlifted 909 pounds which is the current american record in my weight class and also i think the fourth highest uh deadlift in history in america in american history Wow, that's crazy. That's serious. So, Holy it was a fun God. ride. Yeah, twenty twenty two sixty is the is the total. So it's also one of the highest um, raw totals in three hundred eight pound class powerlifting and and basically across all weight classes. So. Wow. wow, yeah, that's that's amazing. Now, Lauren. Can you tell How us about I follow that? <laughs> like, like, she was. Uh, I tamed that. I pulled his laundry. Yeah, I have BB Pro. Uh, yeah, I fold his laundry. I shave his back. I mean, <laughs> you know. Um, um, he does what I say. I mean, you could throw that in there, right? Or, or does that not happen? No, we're pretty like mutually. Oh, yeah. We agree. I'm not mutually one of those, on like, things. Yeah. I'm definitely not a controlling kind of woman who's like, you know, you need to do all these. Unless things the me. mood is right. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not like that. Please. I I made a dinner the other night. I made risotto for the first time mm. ever, and I was so it was a thrilling experience because I couldn't <laughs> wait for him to come home and eat it. I was like, oh my god, I'm cooking for my man. Like I was so happy. <laughs> like, I like doing that. Uh, oh, that's funny. That's because it's such a rare occasion. I cook <laughs> yep. for him like every day. I wouldn't take it. So Susie Homemaker is one title. <laughs> What um, else? <laughs> well, okay. My name is Lauren Quinn. I'm from River Grove, Illinois, which is just outside of Chicago, where my family's all from. I'm 33 years old, and uh, I received my or I earned my IFBB Pro title in women's physique 
this past June at the NPC Junior Nationals in Rosemont. It's an awesome day, very exciting, and certainly feel like it validated my years and years and years yeah. of, of hard work and training and dedication. I started lifting weights, you know, really young and played a bunch of sports. So it's something like I've I've always been into. This is just like a three year transformation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I've uh, I pl- uh, what else I say? Um, I have a powerlifting meet coming up, but I'm only doing bench press because I've got some knee problems that I'm trying to you know work through and work around. But um, I would say that bodybuilding is like my main my main sport right now. Mm-hmm. And my next competition is July sixth. It's the Wings of Strength Chicago Pro. Oh, nice. nice. Did he have any influence on the powerlifting thing, or were you kind of in that before you met? <laughs> Great question. Of course, um, of course no, I did. <laughs> I, it's all from Steve, really. Uh, my experience with weight training goes all the way back to high school, and then uh, I did. I've also was involved in CrossFit for a few years, which kind of turned me on to Olympic lifting, and I actually had plans the summer that Steve and I got together to start training with my sister at this specialty gym for Olympic lifting Mm -hmm. because she was a former CrossFitter as well. And then, though, when when Steve and I got together – I kind of pushed that. Put the that. kibosh on all yeah. Yeah, No more know. CrossFit. No Olympic <laughs> lifting, no, <laughs> no CrossFit. Nothing Probably. like that. Um, <laughs> he, I just, I don't know. It, it became like less of something I wanted to do. Um, you just interest shifted yeah, pretty much, Yeah, that's all. Right? And, I mean, lifting is still lifting. You yeah, know? you're still so getting after still, it every yeah, day. Yeah, of course. Just a little different. And so we actually did a power lifting meet that yeah. summer. It was in okay. July. It was like an unsanctioned kind of like – it was like a a bro lift session. Nice, basically. yeah, yeah, good. Just yeah. a bunch of bros and a bunch of chalk. And yeah, just... I was actually um I was selling um wasn't I I had a booth there right did, I was yeah. I sponsored the event as a matter of oh, fact yeah oh, nice. I had no business sponsoring anything uh-huh. I had zero money <laughs> like, <laughs> like I got this dude whatever yeah just... it was um it was a clothing company I was working with at the time called branded um branded you know fit clothing and um, I brought some slingshot gear um if anybody doesn't know what slingshot is that's uh, Mark Bell. Mm-hmm. Who owns? Um, it's like basically what he's known for is this apparatus that goes across your chest to help you, like you know, save your shoulder during bench press. But he makes a ton of other gear too. And um, I was a wholesaler for him at the time, so I was showing up to like different events and stuff like that, setting up booths. And we just decided, yeah, we'll lift too. I'll deadlift and bench press. Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, push pull meets that yeah. also had a. Power curl event. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, power yeah. curl? Yeah. Like, yeah. like a preacher yeah. curl? Or how no, you, uh, <laughs> well, you stand against the wall. It's a strict curl. Okay. Like, you can't use momentum. Yeah. And you, it's literally that, just one rep. We should have done that. that. that we did fun. it. That, we should have for the hell of painful. it. It never sounded like power lifting to me. You ever seen someone tear a bicep? Oh, I've seen it, yeah. That would suck. I've seen someone tear a hamstring, bicep, lats. Man. Glutes. Glutes. Yeah. Yeah, or their pants or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> blow, yeah. or, <laughs> nothing like blowing a crotch out or of their something. anus, whatever. <laughs> Shit comes yeah. out, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you guys? Is this what you do full time then? Pretty much, is it? Is it bodybuilding and powerlifting, or do you do a do you work another job too besides coaching? Or is this the fitness is your is your this whole life? This is much. our main our main gig. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, This is um this is all I do. Actually, uh, this month is uh one year since I resigned from the sheriff's department. Yeah, and um. You know, I use some of my pension money and stuff like that to invest in the gym and kind of get everything going. And actually, uh, I mean, this year has been just a crazy year. It's uh, the year before that was going really well. Um, Once I got, like, the courage enough to, like, think, okay, I can do this on my own, then I took the risk, you know. Yeah. Um, What made you do that? Because that is risky, like you said. Yeah. Um, I I just wasn't enjoying the job anymore. I was a corrections officer. Sure. Um, yeah. I have a couple buddies in, in Rockford. Same thing. Yeah, yeah right? you know, and it's um, it's it's actually wasn't so much the inmates, it's just the environment you work in and the politics, politics. involved yeah. in the job. It's thankless too, you know. You don't get appreciated for what you do. Oh man, I found so many things, or been in so many uh, riots, or uh, freaking knife fights, whatever. Yeah, you figure out wow. you're by yourself. And no one cares. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like we just call, I just come home to her like a regular. Yeah, day. but you're glad he's you know? done. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Yeah, that's dangerous. and little do you know I was fighting twenty guys earlier in the day, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, I heard about guys like throwing piss on on. Oh yeah, that's definitely uh, common, very common. Oh. That's happened to it's never happened to me. Um, that happened to a lot of my um, buddies. I actually didn't have too many problems there, thank God. And right. mainly because I was scaring people when I yeah. walked in right. places. So <laughs> sure, um, which was good. I mean, all these years of working out, being a big guy, it's a uh, it's a deterrent. You know yeah. what I mean? 
and I knew it was, so I used it to my advantage. Then, you know, less hands-on, easier day. Yeah, exactly. So I could sit around and play gin rummy with my friends. Sure. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> around so the you, table you, you at the focus, jail, yeah. Focus on the more important things, right? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Uh, so actually you do have a, a, a little bit of a background in uh, fighting, though, right? In yeah. MMA mm-hmm. and, and in jujitsu too. Is that yeah. what got you started into that? Uh, so basically, um, to kind of go back a little further than that, was uh, in high school I was, you know, I was a fat kid. Sure. And um, basically after high school I wanted to, I, lo- I wanted to lose a bunch of weight because I wanted a girlfriend. I was sick of all my friends. Yeah, you know, single dude. Right? Yeah, I want to make out with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take somebody to a dance too, you know. So I'm gonna get really strong and make her. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. So um, you know, I decided to uh, when I was about 19, one of my friends that I worked with at a tire shop. He um, was working out at a commercial gym, and I was like, he kept trying to get me to go, and I would never go, you know. And then finally, I was—I don't know what snapped in me. I was just sick of it, you know. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll go with you. We're gonna get so, chicks. Let's go. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Well, he—that's how he helped, like, yeah. coerce me into going. He's like, there's a lot of girls there. <laughs> this girl works there. Check her, at whatever, you know. So uh, I decided to start going, and um, I actually had a personal trainer actually when I first started. I got kind of got suckered into it on sure. a, oh, a selling yeah. like a deal. Uh-huh. And I was naive. It definitely was. Actually, looking back at it, it was worthwhile. I paid a lot of money for it that I didn't have. Yeah. But um, I learned a lot from the guy who was basically a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was kind of freakishly strong already. Yeah. And he kind of was always, you know, oh, you sure you never lifted? You're really strong in this or that. And I was like, yeah, I never lifted. Got really into it because um, the results yeah, came probably, very quickly. Yeah, half yeah. and fast. Yep. And I mean, I was dropping a ton of weight really fast. Um, I was doing things at first the wrong way, you know, like I didn't know anything. So mm-hmm. you're like not eating, you oh, know, yeah, and just yeah. working out like crazy. You know, I, I'd like to say I at one point I might have been like a cardio queen a little bit, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, I can't uh, see it. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, the interest was just losing as much weight as possible mm-hmm. and just trying to look better. And I did. Um Probably, I think it, my, the first maybe like eight months, I, I think it dropped probably like 75 pounds. Wow. wow. Yeah, maybe even close to 100. And then a lot of my friends that uh, I had been seeing on and off within the month, or that wouldn't see me for a couple months, they were, every time I came back, they were like, wow, dude, you look completely like a different person. So I got addicted to the results and the compliments, mm-hmm. you know, and of course, like it kept pushing me and pushing me to do better. Started attracting attention of girls and stuff, so obviously it was working. Yeah. <laughs> The master plan came together. Yes, finally, <laughs> I can quit now. Yeah, I gotta yeah. Grow. <laughs> so uh, basically, how I got into MMA to go back to that question was I, um, it was kind of like, all right, let's test my fitness level. I guess you know what I mean. Like, let's see where I can go. I actually started out in Jeet Kune Do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So I was doing that. Um, was learning some knife fighting, you know, Wing Chun and all that stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. Go with the flow. That isn't that kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like using people's body, uh, like their momentum and motion, you know, to mm-hmm. push back, you know, a lot of, I don't know, a bunch of crazy yeah, Bruce Lee shit. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't you know. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, so I started off doing that at first, and one of the coaches there was into MMA. Okay. And, um, you know, I was a big guy, so he did uh, college wrestling. Nice. So he taught me a lot of wrestling stuff I didn't know. So I I loved it a lot. You know, yeah. it was great. And um, I was learning that we decided to go join Keith Hackney's Combat Academy for a small time uh, until I found out they weren't really teaching you shit there. They would just go there and let, like, you know who Gideon Ray is? No. Guys like no. that. Um, oh, back in the day, Gideon Ray was in the UFC okay, a couple times okay. and stuff. And, just uh, let guys like that use you as a body? Pretty that's much? it, man. They just throw us in a ring. I didn't know anything, and I was getting my ass kicked every yeah. day, you know? Thanks, dude. Well, so I stopped going there. I ended up with um, Midwest Training Center. Uh, when Alex Trujillo and and the Guida brothers just started coming there around that time. Nice, Clay and Clay uh, and Jason. Jason. Yeah, so um, I started learning a ton there. Um, found out that I I was pretty naturally good at just fighting, you know what I mean? And yeah. I had a good composure about myself all the time. So uh, after probably about a year of training in MMA, decided the ultimate test of my fitness oh, level cool. yeah. and endurance and all this newfound, you know, in like I guess uh, hobby. Mm-hmm. Decided to do my first fight under Alex Trujillo's um, guidance, basically. Nice. Was that yeah. was an XFO or something? Was that? Um, the first what? one wasn't. It was the Combat Doe. Okay. Um, one of the Combat Doe ones. I forgot what they call him, but Bob Shermer mm-hmm. um, was throwing an event at uh, what's called I think it was Concordia Theater. 
Okay. Down in the city, and I did the first fight out there in a shitty cage. Mm-hmm. I mean, guys were hitting like the cage. Link, like, like they had a freaking uh, chain link. Uh, <laughs> they had a chain with a hook. Oh, locking no. the door oh. guys went flying out of it actually that night Jeez. and then uh some of the times when guys were hitting the cage the cage was this zip tied oh, to the top classic. bars <laughs> so when it's hitting the uh when guys bodies i mean you're talking like if the guy's big enough you're talking about yeah. five to six hundred pounds of man yeah. crashing into the side of this zip tied fence i don't, I don't know, you know why anyone would call that barbaric <laughs> that's it doesn't make sense yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. so the, you would you would see these guys hit this fence and these zip ties go flying you know oh. <laughs> they'd come back and fix them all the time but uh so that was my first fight, and the first one I ever did lasted uh, 22 seconds. I won by a um, like a TKO. Right. So um, just like a it was like a doctor contest. stoppage. Oh, okay. Um, he got cut. Um, literally just clinched him, kneed him against the cage like it was like a hook, and then an uppercut with the same hand, and then the uppercut was like gashed his eye open pretty good after that. I would imagine it'd be hard to get out of your clinch. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. yeah like the death I mean, you know what? At that time, I wasn't as big as I am now. I, when you're talking about when I was fighting, I fought at about 225 pounds. Okay. And uh, I did Still one fight big. at 205 pounds, if you can believe that. And right now, Jeez. I'm 305 wow. pounds. Yeah, you know? 100 pounds ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Looking, Just a little guy. So tiny, you know, it's yeah, funny. Looking back at some of the old videos, um, one of them I did was the WEF, and I was in uh, – Louisville, Kentucky. I fought out there, and I thought I was like the most jacked, hottest thing in the world. Mm. I look back and I'm like, I have this soft baby muscle. You know? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but I like, thought I was the coolest dude yeah, in the world. That's yeah, cute. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah. then, and then I think I remember you talking about kind of the end of the the MMA career. There's an injury there or something. Right? Yeah. So uh, around the same time, so I started the sheriff's department in 2007, and um, I had done a fight uh, prior to that. Well, actually. Uh, a couple years prior to that, and I injured my foot. Um, the foot caused a whole like slew of problems, yeah, problems for me financially, and uh, you know, with a job and all that stuff, not having health insurance, or anything. So um, we were in training, and I was kicking some pads. The guy was holding like some tie pads. Yeah. And I kicked, and he flinched, and oh, no. my foot came elbow. and boom, hit his yeah. elbow. Oh. That so, think, yeah. yeah, so the bone came out of my foot, and it was, like, oh. a horrifying scene. Oh, dude, and, right there in the gym. Oh. Yeah, and, I mean, I was bleeding everywhere. So, um, I ended up getting surgery. Yeah. And um, I think my mom, which I didn't know at the time, my mom rallied up all the people at her work and friends and family, stuff like that, donated money for me to get the surgery done. That was nice. Yeah, yeah and uh, I was living in an apartment in the meantime, and then I couldn't work because I was in this cast with a pin in my foot. And uh, ended up losing my job and then staying in my car for a while in the gym parking lot, just training and just, just sleep, out, sleep out in the car. That's all I knew. Yeah, that's oh, what I was man. doing, you know. Shower in the gym. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. what I was washing my clothes. So actually uh, tomorrow on uh, Channel 5 is like a lot of that story comes out. I did a, um, about two weeks ago, was two or three weeks ago, mm-hmm. a guy by the name of Mike Berman, the reporter who follows the Bears. Yeah. Um, he found me on, on social media and actually through his barber, who was just a fan of weightlifting, and they liked my story so much, he got in contact with me. We actually went to the parking lot. We went to the Export Your Fitness. Old, the old home, right? Yeah, yeah. Much <laughs> yeah, we went to the Export Fitness I was in, too, and you know, I showed them the tanning beds and stuff I would make my bed in and the uh, washing machine wow. where they wash the gym towels. Wash my clothes in there, and you know that was. And then across the street was IHOP. I would go eat at. Boom, perfect. You know, yeah. and uh, actually it was funny. The manager slash waitress there, we ended up becoming good friends, and she would give me free food. She would also wake me up to go to work. You That's know, she crazy. would come out to the parking lot and be like, "Hey, you gotta go." Um, she ended up working at the Cook County Sheriff's Department with me. We got hired the same year. Um, because she's the one who told me about the job. I was yeah. a bouncer at the time, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, what's that like a hundred bucks a night or something they usually give a bouncer? Or... It was like ten I mean, bucks an hour, yeah, and they would pay yeah, us like... at the end of the week, maybe. Yeah, maybe. If yeah, I hassled I've... the freaking owner for my money, you I've know? heard that. So, yeah, you kind of got to get on them, or it's just yeah. cash, right? There's no way. Yeah, it was just cash. Yeah, and I was doing like security jobs at the time too, like for another security company downtown, um, sitting in construction sites in the same car that I lived in. You know, so I would, and yeah. so yeah, I just drive my house to another location. <laughs> yeah, it's like you a know. camper, but a little smaller. Yeah, it was a Crown Victoria. You oh, know, like so, dude, it was a pretty decent sized car. They got room, yeah. man. That, I mean, that, I got a grand marquee that I I use for a yeah, work car, same, man. Same yeah, thing, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Put that seat back. Come on. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. When I get in one of those, it's like a familiar thing. Like, oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> right. 
So then after that, I, that's when you started with the sheriff's department after uh, a couple of years a, later, I, I started with the sheriff's department. I did one more fight prior. Uh, actually, I think right before I started the Academy, okay. I actually lost that fight. That was the XFO. Um, I don't remember the number, but it was the one at the uh, Sears center. It was 13. Okay. okay. So, I, um, yeah. yeah. Yep. So I fought at the Sears center. Uh, I lost to a decision there. Um, which was like everybody was kind of upset about because uh, if you see like the after fight interviews, I don't even look like I was like in a fight. Yeah. The other guy was jacked up pretty bad, you know, and I was hammering him. The guy just had a fucking hard head so, and took yeah. me down for some good points and controlled about, the fight. He controlled the, points, the fight yeah. a little bit better, yeah. you know, yeah. and um, ended up losing to a decision. And basically I got hired at the sheriff's department not too long after that. And I just yeah, kind of fizzled out that. after that. Yeah, I, that's that's one reason why I never – like when I first started training jiu-jitsu a long time ago, someone said something about MMA. I was like, dude, I don't have insurance. So yeah. I, I could have had that same story. You know, I mean, yeah. you get hurt in a fight where you're not going to make any money, and then you don't have insurance, so you're just out thousands of dollars. I yeah. got stitches yeah. one day rolling. Just someone caught me with a heel to the eye, and that was all out of pocket. I'm like, it's stupid. Yeah. That's man. when like, super glue comes yeah, in. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's when yeah. – a couple buddies and super glue, right? Yeah, that's yeah. um, yeah, that's uh, you know, you you always uh, you never think that insurance is that important until you fucking need to get yeah, yeah, shit done. yeah, and they hand you that bill or you get it in the mail after you go to the emergency room. You're like, this cost this freaking. Yeah, are you kidding me? I was, yeah. I was there for an hour and fifty nine of that minutes. Yeah. I was waiting in the waiting room. You These know? doctors yeah. are all crooks. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I kind of have a, a a question that's maybe a little off the wall. I mean, I'm sure people ask you, but I'm just kind of figuring. How do you take like being strong, you know, like you're obviously a real strong dude and you knew that. How do you take that and turn that into like a brand or, or into money? You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of strong people out there that, that might not understand like how yeah. the business side of it works. You know um, I mean? It's extremely difficult. That's for sure. I mean, um, to make money, Lauren sees it firsthand every single day. I mean, I'm, I'm literally on my phone all day long. Mm -hmm. I'm on social media all yeah. day, all day long, li literally answering direct messages emails, even going out and trying to find certain athletes that look like maybe they could use some help or they're from the area. Um, what helps is that my popularity is uh, much higher. Yeah. And the things, yeah, the things I've done too in the sport is that I'm a reputable athlete mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty, I would like to say I'm pretty well known in the sport. So definitely. Yeah. Um, I started telling people you're coming out. How'd you get him to come out? This and that. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. I offered him a blowjob. I mean, duh. <laughs> that's how you get him off. And right? he accepted. And oddly, <laughs> he accepted. Yeah. Uh, that's why he's here. Hello. <laughs> that won't be on camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so definitely making money on it's uh, difficult. It helps with the gym. It helps with all the avenues of social media I have, the following. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, you know, basically just when people uh, have, like, a set pricing and, like, when they come to the gym and stuff like that, I consult them. Um, I'm going to start being a little bit more choosy of the people. that at first I was just taking anybody, personal For training, clients, clients yeah, whatever, whatever right? weight loss, all that stuff, which I still kind of do. And I kind of try to guide them into – powerlifting you know and it ends yeah. up working though a lot of them actually um there's a couple girls that i'm working with now um they're they're big girls they're overweight you i know? think i saw a couple on instagram right yeah or no, and yeah. actually they are like probably the best marketing tool for me because mm -hmm. a lot of them have no experience at all in lifting and here it, here it is every single week they're seeing new progress new progression they're seeing their strength go through the roof and some of these uh, girls actually have pretty decent Instagram followings too. So they, those people see that and then they seek me back out. So it's, it's all about basically how you put yourself out there and like, and showcasing your product, not just me as an athlete, because me as an athlete, I don't get paid that well. There's no, no way I could rely on that. I, you know? Yeah. I think a lot of people don't understand that either. I mean, you yeah. win a, you win a competition, you right. even have records and, and probably everyone. I thinks, mean, I oh. get checks from those competitions, yeah. but you know, what, what was uh boss of bosses? I broke their American record. I left with $900. Yeah. That doesn't yeah, even I cover mean, that, getting there. That back. was yeah. like not even a portion of the travel expenses barely, yeah. but luckily the sponsors I work with, um, some of them pay me every month, but a lot of them, they don't give me money every month. It's free products. But they pay me in return as uh, travel expenses. So people see me all over the place, mm -hmm. and they're like, they all automatically assume Super, you're rich. Yeah, he's got. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I'm not rich. I have nothing. I hustle every month to pay my rent just, yeah. and all the bills yeah. I have. Um, and I just make it. I feel like all the time. But you know, it's uh, it it's working, and I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the hustle. I like what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I wake up every morning like not 
you know, waiting for the countdown to go to the jail. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And like, fight the inmate or wonder what's going to happen all day. You know, I'm in control of the year. environment. Yeah, I'm in control of the environment. And and but as an athlete, though, you're you're not going to get paid. You have to like really branch out. And the business is coaching. Yeah. You know, for me and now the gym too. But the gym, um, I haven't. I just bought into the gym not that long ago. So uh, it's two two other guys and myself that own it, but none of us are taking any money from it because um, the Just gym keep, keep it coming back in. Yeah, <laughs> and and trying to make it better. You know, oh. we're about to expand it, so it's going to be almost ten thousand square feet. Oh, that's Chicago Barbell. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I actually was an original member of that gym, and the old owner just basically let it go to hell. And uh, from what we found out, he wasn't paying the rent. It was like oh, over a hundred thousand dollars in back wow, rent. But he's getting all the membership money every month. Yeah. He's well, all, what yeah. he did was he told the original trusted guys I was there all the time, one of the strongest dudes there, like, "Hey, I'm going to remodel the place. Can you help me move some stuff?" So we moved stuff around, mm-hmm. thinking we're going to paint, and like, "Oh wow, this place has needs a much needed, you know, facelift." Yeah. And um, all of a sudden, people are contacting me, going, "What happened with the barbell compound?" And I'm like, "I don't know." We find out he closed the doors, charged everybody's accounts, yeah, another month of rent, wow. took full uh, year memberships up front, and left to Arizona. Damn. No, no word, yeah. no nothing, just see nothing. Ya. And uh, changed his name. <laughs> no, he didn't. He actually didn't. He was changed actually ballsy gender. enough that when, um, so the building actually they sold the equipment back to us as a package and said if we can get a membership back to the gym this many people they gave us like a minimum like a quota to hit we hit it um at the time i wasn't a partnership in the gym i was just um like a face of it basically my popularity helping them bring it back plus i wanted it back too because we had i was tired of working out export i mean i barely fit in the squat racks you know my elbows were killing me trying to get in there and um geometrical they're yeah. the iron grip oh, one yeah yeah, yeah. Right, the yeah. And, you know um, it's not a platform or even a designated space for deadlift no yeah and you're yes. talking about i'm training for like the highest level competitions in the yeah, u.s at a freaking wrong. commercial gym and you know i try not to make excuses with that stuff because to me equipment's equipment but it, it definitely is nicer though when you can get a hold of some nice stuff but yeah. Um, the two guys that owned it before I did, um, I was like consulting them on what types of equipment we should get, how we should change the culture of, of the membership come there. And, um, eventually when I decided to leave the sheriff's department, took my money, we negotiated a buy-in with them and, uh, you know, I purchased some stuff and then we were able to, you know, do some, do some cool shit there. So it's still blowing up. Nice. It's actually, we have quite the like cult following. Everybody yeah. knows what everybody you, knows. To, oh, yeah. Chicago, you know what that gym is. Yep. Everybody know? I talk to is like, oh yeah, if we're saying a warrior at Chicago Barbell. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yep, yeah, that's yeah. The one. I, mean, I yeah. have never been there, so I'm like, I don't. Well, what's know, great but... too is we're very close to O'Hare Airport. Oh, so uh, yeah. what happens a lot is um, it's a destination spot for like a lot of fitness people. So they get off the um, airplane and it's maybe five to ten minute drive. And a lot of them, they come in and they just want to know if I'm there and they'll take a picture of me. And like yesterday I was there, they just want to take a picture and then they leave. Yeah. You know, Didn't okay, you guys can work out if you want. You tell know? me you got to buy a guest pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if they're out of towners, I, if they're out of towners for like a day or they just want to say hello, I won't charge them for right. a guest pass. But if it's like a continual like resident or whatever. We're hanging out every day and you're taking yeah. pictures. Yeah. yeah. Just get the membership. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a 24-hour gym, key card access. There's not always a staff there. I'm there a lot of the time, though. I, right. I have in person. I have, like, actually in person, I, I only have, like, seven clients. But online, I have, like, 30. Yeah. You know, and that's still going. But we're coming up with an application process right now that they have to apply for it. Oh, nice. So I can kind of weed out. Because you get a lot of guys that just shop around. Mm-hmm. And the problem is on social media, there's all these, um, like, Instagram coaches there, you yeah. know, they, you know, they might be just like a good looking guy or girl, mm-hmm. great physique oh, we and, about oh. oh yeah, they have yeah. like 2 million followers or something. Yeah. They don't know how to coach, you know, no. pile of dog shit. No, and, you know, and all they do is they post half naked pictures, right. mm-hmm. get the like, you know, sex cells, oh, yeah. sex cells. And, and people and... believe that. And mm-hmm. then they write them some generic plan. There's no, um, there's a structure to it, but it's what they call cookie cutter yeah, there's, and there's, everybody there's gets not, it. Yeah. yeah, It's not you periodized. Know? So it yeah. doesn't change. You'll like, never talk to the person. No. So actually the clients I work with online, they all speak to me every single week. I mean, my phone's blowing up all day. Yeah. Constantly texting each other back and forth, kind of seeing where they're at because I'm dealing with people who are um, in the position that I was at one point mm-hmm. and 
you know, they need the guidance. It's not that easy. Powerlifting seems easy. You know, go do three lifts. So there's a lot of shit that goes into it. Um, as far as prepping yourself for the meet yeah. and how to conduct yourself and choosing lifts and how to peak for, I mean, there's so much, you Mental know, prep too. Cause yeah. she's done a competition before and I'm she was so telling bad. me, she showed up. <laughs> what, what did you do now? Yeah. Hey, how did well, that... my max before going to the meet was like 165 for bench. And I get to That's the meet. That's a good meet. bench press actually. Yeah. I was yeah. pretty good at bench. That was like my only really good lift. But so I get there, I, I did the open lift or whatever it's called, and I think it was like 115 or something. Okay. And I get it down, I couldn't even press it up. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I All go the, the nerves. Time, uh, yeah, my nerves just yeah. like were horrible. And then the second time, we're like, oh, we'll just move it up to your second lift because, you know, we know you can do this. You just got to mm-hmm. get yourself under control. And the same thing happened. And I just, it was like 130 or something like that. And yeah. I got stuck at the bottom. I was like, man. So my last mm-hmm. time, I finally got it up at like 130. And I won first place because I was the only person in my class. So I got a medal at least. Yeah. So. You're not supposed to tell them that. We got a gold medal. That's all yeah. that matters. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Something to brag about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Nobody yeah. knows. You don't have to no. say anything. Yeah. Did you, did you uh-huh. not know you had to pause it? Or no, I just knew. Okay. It's just, I, I don't know. It just felt so heavy. I was yeah. so nervous in my nerves. You, you, know, you know the biggest yeah. mistakes that a lot of the newer athletes like and I try to attend. I attend most of the local stuff with the guys I'm coaching, and that's to handle them, to keep them calm, um, you know, a bunch of other stuff. Make sure they packed all their gear, you mm-hmm. know, make sure they brought enough food. Because one of the biggest mistakes people do, they think a powerlifting me, I'll be there an hour or two. No, no you're there like six to eight you're hours. It's a whole day job. Yep. You know, and and most of the time, it's sad to say you're just fucking waiting around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so you get hungry, and and sometimes these. Um, you know, these meets are like, you know, somewhere out here where there's nothing around. Uh-huh. <laughs> you can't just run yeah, to the seven yeah. eleven or something. <laughs> you know, so you're just uh Random so if you don't bring food, you're screwed. Yeah. You know, yeah. and how can you perform? You don't have anything in your yeah. body. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just trying to keep everybody straight and, and handle them. There's a lot of stuff that goes into coaching and being an athlete too, but it's also like I said, keeping them calm. Yeah. Because uh now it's different, especially if they're a brand new lifter. It's one thing lifting in front of me at the gym and your buddies. Now there's a whole bunch of people staring in your face, waiting for you to do what you said you were going to do. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's unfamiliar. I mean, you you can't bring your bars there either. Yeah, yeah, you got to use all their stuff Uh by their rules, you know. So if you weren't training the right way, you're going to mess up. Uh, My favorite's a squat because I like to uh, stare down at somebody like you're like (laughs) zoning in on someone, you know, and. Looks always kind of crazy, yeah. you know. Uh, what's this? Like, what's this dude staring at? Right? Yeah, the I'm gonna shit myself face. <laughs> yeah. Squatting, yeah. So do they? Do they? Ugh, they make you pause at the bottom of a squat too? No, okay. no. The only paused um, uh, lift is the bench. Okay. Squat is a. They give you a squat command. So after you unrack the bar, um, you stand there with it a second. Usually, what you do is you acknowledge the head judge that's sitting in front of you, mm-hmm. and they'll give you an audible squat and like a hand signal. Okay. And that's when you know you're good to go, and you just go down and come back up, but you can't like rack it right away. You have to also wait for that command. What they're looking for is uh, control of the weight and the yeah. barbell. Yeah. Not all momentum down and up, right? They're, they want to make sure you're controlled. You controlled when you yeah. stop at the top. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can grind it out as long as you want. As long as you're still moving forward, mm-hmm. you're okay. But the minute that you make a backwards motion, then the lift is dead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can't like you know go down yeah. up down yeah up, yeah up, back up again. You can't do that. Yeah. Those meets. Yeah. That's that's crazy. That's kind of like the jujitsu tournaments. Did, did you do any? Those yeah, two? I did yeah. some Naga tournaments. Yeah, yeah, that's the same thing. You can wait around. Those six, are eight fucking hours. intense, yeah. man. Yeah, and then you would think uh, five minutes. No, it's not that bad. You, yeah. What are they about five minutes? Right. Five minutes. Yeah. Forearms are locked oh, up fire, and shit. Yeah, and especially like, if it's gi. Oh <laughs> man. Fire. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, and, and, and it's the same thing. You're waiting for eight hours for them to call you, right? And yeah, you bring yeah. Bring your food or whatever. And then you go 100 miles an hour, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then you go, yeah, fall so long. Especially for bodybuilding, like, too. And then what sucks with those around. is if yeah. you waited that long and you get eliminated, your day is done. Yeah, dude, and, and none sucks. of them are close to home. No. So you just drove two hours. Yeah, yeah. Sat around for four and competed. For well, maybe not minutes. close to your home. Yeah, yeah, nothing. <laughs> well, Where I'm from, there's a lot more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only close mats here are upstairs. That's it. There ain't nothing else close. Uh, so same thing with, with bodybuilding, right? I mean, you're sitting around oh, hours yeah. and hours, right? Mm-hmm. And how do you keep like, you know, with, with the same, how do you keep a good pump? How do you keep everything looking right? She's just dreaming about up? cookies the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is true. You just get pissed <laughs> um, off thinking about food. Well, that's, yeah. That's one of those things that does take, you know, a lot of experience. Um, you know, obviously a person, you know, wants to improve their physique mm-hmm. every time they compete and, you know, every year. 
but the more you actually do compete, you get better at that whole process. Um, you know, obviously that, that peak week is, is very essential to, yeah. you know, do everything the right way. And, uh, the day of you, you too want to have like, you know, your, you know, your certain meals, you know, with you, um, you're probably not drinking too much water at that point. That's the worst but part. It's, it's good to have some for when you're done. Some terrible breath going dry on. Mouth, <laughs> dry yeah. mouth, and you want to drink water the second you get off stage. But uh, it's all about like timing. You don't want to pump up mm -hmm. too soon before you go on stage. Yeah. Then you just kind of tire yourself out. Right. It's all about knowing like when to be calm, like physically, emotionally, uh, lay with your feet up. And, uh, just chill and enjoy the show much, for a while. Yeah, or go, yeah, go watch some of the show and just be paying attention so that you don't miss, mm -hmm. you know, your turn, <laughs> which I suppose happens here and there. I've not been a witness to it, and it hasn't happened to me, but it could. You know, maybe yeah. you're in the bathroom at the wrong time, and yeah, they're calling, <laughs> they're calling your your division or your class, and you aren't, you're not there. But yeah, you know, you, and you don't want to pump up too aggressively because <laughs> then you start sweating. Yeah. You're going to yeah. probably sweat anyways, <laughs> and when you're on the stage, you certainly are sweating, oh, no matter sure. what. Lights, Is that yeah. nerves, too? And, and, but it's and, the lights. It's, it's the, light, okay. the lights. And you do physique, right? So you do, like, Correct. a routine? Yeah. Or do you, yeah, okay, that's what I thought. But that's over, and that's, I don't think, like, what makes me sweat more. Just the, it's being on stage, like, during, yeah. like, the, the compulsory or mandatories. Especially if really? there's a lot of people and they have you move around, and you're up there oh, for and you have to hold those a poses, long time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. very, very hot. So. You, yeah, and I, I know there's probably like a lot of misconceptions with with people that like when they look at bodybuilders too. Like, do you feel you have any issues with body image ever? Or I feel like a lot of bodybuilders do undercover, even though they look amazing and they look great. It's never good enough, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. great question. Yeah, like a body dysmorphia. Yeah, almost. Mm -hmm. You look in the mirror, you're like, I can get better. I, you know? Yeah, right? yeah, or oh, yeah. You yeah. might see yourself. I mean, it's not too different than a you know a victim of anorexia who might. Mm -hmm see his or herself as being like, oh, I'm too fat, I'm too fat, when it's like, in reality, they're extraordinarily thin mm -hmm. and, you know, unhealthy looking and mm -hmm. unhealthy, period. <laughs> so, um, no, I mean, fortunately, like, growing up, I was a real skinny girl, mm -hmm. and um, my body image issues started when I never grew breasts. Yeah, so <laughs> never had boobs, so that was. Uh, I had the boobs yeah. for her, basically. Yeah, yeah, but you can buy those. I, I mean, know. Yeah. Nowadays, it's not a big deal. See? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just a year, oh, two years ago, you know, but um, no, I felt. So wait, you know, wait, two years ago, how long have you guys been together? Two and a half. So yeah. did. Were you a little jealous or something? What happened here? I yeah. gave some of my boob. I was actually a donor for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only. If only. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're the same blood type. So. No, no. <laughs> but um, I know. So if, if, I hope this doesn't sound arrogant. I didn't really have – I started working out so young that, you know, I – like I said, I was, I was thin, and as I got a little older, like I filled out a little more, so I wasn't like so skinny. I was just lean. But – being con like a conditioned athlete for years and years, you know, and as time went on, I just got, you know, more muscle mass. And uh, so I felt really confident about that. But then again, there was a time in like um. my, yeah, I forgot about that. There was a time in probably like my, like from like 23 to 26 in that time period where I was training. I never had a coach or a trainer. Um, and I didn't know a whole lot about nutrition. I certainly didn't follow any kind of diet. That's probably the hardest part, you know? too, right? Nutrition. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Um, but, yeah, there were some times where I felt like like that I was, like, unattractive, that I was ugly, that I was, like, you know, people would think all these, like, negative things about me because I was muscular. Mm -hmm. um, and I get some of that, like, today, but I certainly, like, don't give a shit. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. It doesn't phase me. They don't matter. No, of course not. Um, but, yeah, there was a few years where I felt like, just like yeah like oh i might as well be like this <coughs> overweight girl and be like marginalized yeah. like like they are mm -hmm. um sadly but um and then after a while like i got my confidence back again cuz i just yeah. i started prepping for another competition yeah. and i just you know was around people who you know people who were into it as well yeah, cuz exactly. it can be such a lonely lonely sport yeah, it is. um mm -hmm. and if you if you don't you know make connections and and friends or training partners, or whatever, with people who are also into that that lifestyle, 
um, then it can be, yeah, a lonely road and a difficult mm -hmm. one. Yeah, I think that's, that's huge sure. too because, you know, we're both into fitness and working out. And if you catch yourself, you know, with someone who's not into that lifestyle, that's huge, man. I mean, yeah. you, you're lucky actually that you have mm -hmm. each other. I mean, you already know that, I'm sure. but I don't I mean, know. Remind yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Remind me. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I mean, because that can make or break a relationship. Oh, yeah, know, absolutely, you know, yeah. Disagreeing on, on food, I mean, especially, right? Yeah, well, there's not so much of that. I'm like, <laughs> when she's going through dieting, I'm like, wow, that sucks. I feel so far sorry for you as a meeting cake or something. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, she probably hates yeah. you, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she's not. She gets hang She has her hangry moments. Sure. But I also understand, know? like, no one's. I'm doing it because I want to do it. Yeah. Or like I maybe I'd feel pressures from other areas, like in other people, to do it. But ultimately, it's my choice. So why yeah. should yeah. I? I'm not gonna. I think yell I at yelled him. at. I think I yelled at you one time when you were like throwing a little. You were like rolling on the ground, screaming and kicking your feet. Oh, the fit. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. That's normal. I get I don't it too. Even think I've ever <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think we got in. It was like a short thing. You got in. I was like, I didn't tell you to go get your pro card. This is your yeah. diet, not mine. No, something like that. IFBB yeah. pro card, right? Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure I IFBB yeah. pro. They don't have pro <laughs> cards out in powerlifting. It's just like when you hit a certain number. They're just like, this guy's cool. He lifts a lot. So we're yeah, good. yeah, he's a pro. He's, he's definitely a, trust a that guy. You yeah. should see though. You should see the actual card. It's like really pathetic uh, like, yeah. Yeah. Really we're like paper. the most like yeah it's like a flimsy like a vista print <laughs> uh yeah like yeah, free you, business card you work so hard and you just get this yeah and i'm like oh but it's, it's so anticlimactic when it came in the mail too uh, oh I, I, it was, was it packaging in a, no, but it, it was, said it was open with caution <laughs> it was in an envelope uh, like a regular envelope and uh it was folded in like a piece of paper i thought it was going to be this like official letter with like letterhead like mm. welcoming me congratulating me it was a like, blank sheet of paper and it was just serious? this card wrapped in there I was <laughs> just like, thrown what? in there uh, like okay it's like, yeah they text you a link go ahead and uh print this one yeah, yeah. 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 Card, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. they should send it with like a food gift card like a lettuce entertain you <laughs> yeah gift card right. or something. that would be cool yeah. right here's some, or throw you some romaine lettuce or yeah, something yeah. there you go this is all you're gonna eat for a while now no um huh. So I had a few uh, a few listener questions, if we can get to those, because I, I know you guys have some plans coming up soon, so I wanted to yeah. not take all night with you here. but We can um, take all night. It's cool. Okay, all night. We got it. Okay, we're going to pull an all-nighter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> get the beers out. Let's go. Yeah. So <laughs> Actually, we do have a bar here, too. So um, right. This place is getting better and better. <laughs> In the garage on the oh, other yeah. side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we do have – yeah. I was Got looking for the uh, engine blocks and random car parts all over the lawn. <laughs> we, uh, there used to be that until oh, okay. I moved in. I was like, yeah, uh, oh, there you, you go. Yeah, up. okay. You got to add the woman's touch. Yeah. 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 It's still got some work to do. Yeah, but, you know, sure, but... there's, there's still an extra car in there I got to I gotta sell. But, Project uh, car. It's a little race car, but yeah. I got to get rid Storage. of it. Storage. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My dad has, a like, his older truck. My dad's a carpenter, and so his older truck is um in the driveway, but on, like, the other side of this fence, so, like, you don't really see it, like, if you're walking mm -hmm. past the house. And he basically uses it as like a tool shed. Yeah, it's a <laughs> like tool shed. Stores yeah. stuff in it. That's hilarious. That's funny. Dude. It's a good idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you like that? You agreed. It's official. <laughs> she she said, "Yeah, it. you heard it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's on video and in audio." No. Um, I had I had one person ask, "How many times a day do you eat?" Um. So <laughs> my diet's kind of it's kind of interesting because I don't really keep track of it. Yeah. I just eat when I'm hungry. So you're just real intuitive, right? If I, you feel like hey, I got to. Yeah, eat. I feel like it's time to eat or I'm bored. Yeah, yeah, that's that's <laughs> just like everybody there. else. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. smash them, you know. But uh, it it averages out to around five times, five to six times. Do you know about like where your where your macros are or your calories no, are? No, I don't keep track know, of that no, stuff, man. No. I just eat just and lift eat, eat, like yeah. the old school way, you know. That's like cool. before yeah. I lift or before I know I'm gonna go work out, and if it's a, depending on the intensity of the workout, that decides the type of meal. Mm -hmm. I don't like anything that's gonna like sit in my stomach, so I'll have something that maybe digests a little bit faster mm -hmm. or. A lot of carbs, usually like rice or mm -hmm. you, you know, fucking peanut butter jelly sandwich or something like <laughs> yeah, that. You know? Sugar, whatever. Yeah, right. whatever. You know, sometimes uh, Swedish fish or um, you know, sour patch patch kids are on the menu. Mm -hmm. you know? so, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. my sour patch kids Swedish for fish. sure. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, had someone ask. I know we kind of covered this, but what is it that that finally made you just snap and leave the job and, and go into weightlifting 100? percent Was there like a certain moment or a day at work or was it just accumulative like you said um i think it definitely like built up over time um there was a couple different things that was going on with me in that period of my life at that time i was also going through a separation and divorce so um just the the mentality wasn't there like i kind of like mentally checked out of a lot of things and all i cared about was lifting because that's what made me feel good still 
Um, but you know, just sick of the uh, the bosses and the you know the sheriff coming out with all these new policies and you know the. I thought the jail became softer. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. I I enjoyed if you know it sounds terrible and like someone was had, but could, yeah. Yeah, you know, like if someone needed to be put in line, you bitch slapped them or yeah. something. Sure, you shoved them in a in a damn cell. Oh, yeah, now there's cameras. Or you hog tied them or something. You know, like you let them know who the boss is. Yeah. And you know, I didn't. It, it got away from that. So everyone's suing right away, right? Sue yeah, I mean, I've been sued multiple times. Yeah. You know, but it doesn't go anywhere. You know. Yeah. What I mean? Just a waste so, of time. Yeah. Right? I mean, and that... all these guys know it's just a. Uh, it's just the county's going to settle with them. Mm-hmm. Even if the officer wasn't at fault at all, the county is like, uh, here's negotiating yeah. even two hundred bucks yeah, or twenty dollars or some yeah. shit. Because a lot of these guys are going away to the penitentiary for years and years and years, and and that money will just transfer over to like some commissary money for them, so they could buy fucking TV or Cigarettes honey buns or whatever, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then uh, I had another one ask, what did your routine look like when you started to see the numbers go up? I mean, were were you as far as the deadlifting, were, were you there? Three times a week, four times a week. Was it? Uh, how many times a week do I deadlift? Yeah, like, and, and, I mean, or was this, I doing it? Yeah, this is more like in the beginning when you really started to see serious uh, improvements. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, other than you know I went on YouTube or read like uh, you know article on like muscle and fitness or something, and I would see like uh, somebody, especially we talk about it all the time, Stan Efferding, um, who is also known as the Rhino, but like one of the smartest. He's an IFBB pro and one of the most accomplished uh, powerlifters out there, world record holding at the time. Um, older guy. Um, we actually personally know him very well. So what's crazy is I idolize this man. And I can text him or call him anytime for advice. Now you know we've I've done it. He's been on my podcast as a matter of fact. That's crazy. Yeah, I've been to his house. I did actually the podcast in his wow. garage in Vegas. Dang, right? Yeah, it was hot yeah, as hell. Okay, I was so dying. Nice. Yeah, than here? Than it was way hotter than here. It was like baking summer <laughs> sun out there, you know, and. Uh, you know, I followed kind of at the time. Stan Efferding was noted for um, world record deadlift that he had, which was eight thirty seven point five. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how I could not fathom how this man could fucking do this. You know what I mean? And look so so great. So to me, he looked like the ideal um, power lifter. You know, yeah. he had an awesome physique and he was really strong. So I started copying. He had actually it was an article that had Stan Efferding's deadlift routine. Oh, nice. And okay. it showed all the warm-up sets leading up to 800 and something pounds. It'd be great if so, we could find that issue. Yeah, so I started <laughs> – I decided I'm going to follow it and kind of go up as far as I can, you know. And, and then it just – I got stronger and stronger. And finally, um, I got a coach. Um, this is much later, though. And the coach kind of guided me a little bit more as far as, like, how to – put a program together mm-hmm. um so what i was doing was reading a lot about powerlifting and strength training and kind of making my own program from there yeah. right so you i know. mean if you gave anyone advice it'd be the same thing right get yeah. a coach get someone that knows right yeah get a do. coach definitely um get some guidance of some mm-hmm. sort you know i'm not saying run out and get you know the highest uh the one that's you know making everyone elite athletes in the sport or anything like that because it's it's fucking expensive yeah just get someone that knows more yeah. than you right? a little bit yeah i mean honestly just do some reading yeah you know Research. um yeah. yeah there's a strength book i forgot what it was called but i looked at it and there and it had the ideology or what is called linear progression mm-hmm. and which is like the basis of most strength uh progress you know so I kind of followed that guideline, which actually when I write my programming now for people, it's still kind of along those guidelines, Yeah. which is everybody's, and they just make their own twist to it, basically. Yep. And, you know, I just started getting stupid strong. So. <laughs> and now the sky's working. the limit. I'm not stopping now. <laughs> you know? right. Well, that, that actually leads right into the next one. Um, I had someone ask, and specifically, are you going to beat Dr. Deadlift in pulling 1,000 pounds? <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, my I buddy. Don't, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. the doctor, Dr. Deadlift... Is a uh, he's 23, 24. Yeah, 23, 24 year old. His name's Kaylor Woolham. He's from Texas. I actually had him on my podcast too. He's a great kid. Um, we talk a lot of shit to each other. It's yeah, great. but uh, that, that's why I was like, man, I don't know if I yeah, want to ask this. I, I think um, so. Kaylor outpulled me. He has so I have the um, American record in my weight class. Kaylor Woolham has the overall highest American deadlift ever, and he's only 220 pounds. Jeez, his leverages are just insane. He's just just awesome man. you know he's a sumo deadlifter so they say he's cheating oh yeah because his legs are like in a split stance sure you know? yeah yep. um so um but 
you know, he's uh, kind of came to the scene more popular right away, basically in the last year and a half, two years or so, um, when people saw him pull 900 pounds, this small guy. He sounds like a freak. He yeah, is. I yeah, mean, yeah. he is. He's a good kid. Um, He's a manager of a grocery store. Let's throw that out there. My, my job is way cooler. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kaler did start powerlifting in high school. Yeah. So even though he's so young. Oh, he's got years he's on got, He's yeah. got more years, years like, in competition in than I do. Yeah. Um, yeah, because he could start at, what, like 15 or something or how young? Something like yeah, that, like something yeah. like that, yeah. And uh, in Texas, you know, Texas is like big on everything. If they had ultimate Frisbee, they'd be packing stadiums. Yeah, there, yeah. You know? a bunch of Jack <laughs> yeah. going. Yeah, so uh, Kaler, I, I think I'll, I think um, this might be the year that I pass them up. We're all gunning for a 1,000-pound deadlift. Um, and if he ever listens to this, fuck you, Kaler. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, we're all gunning. There's three of us currently gunning for a thousand pound deadlift. Um, it's only in powerlifting, in raw powerlifting, it's only been done one time. Um, and it's by a guy who's actually a strong man. His name is Benedict Magnuson. He pulled a thousand fifteen as a super heavyweight. So he was over 400 pounds when he yeah, did it. So guy. all three of us would be the smallest people to do this. Um, Kaler being the absolute smallest. The other one is his name is Yuri Belkin, who's uh, sponsored by Eight Man Strong with me, uh, but he's from Russia, mm-hmm. and that kid's another freaking. He's pulled mm-hmm. nine seventy five. Yeah, they're they're yeah they're strong over there. Sure. Yeah, 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 something in that that Some, vodka. Over there. Something in the water. <laughs> but um, I think so. From what I understand, Kaler's having a lot of knee problems right now, and it's affecting his lifts. Um, it doesn't look like it on Instagram, but I've had some personal talks with him and I, I think it's, it's bugging him to the point where he might have to take a step back for a little bit. Mm. And he's talking about focusing more on his bench press right now. But, um, my goal is to fucking, I want domination. That's what I want. I'm going <laughs> to fucking win everything. Well, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the mindset you got to have though, you mm-hmm. know, is, um, they always say like the people that are the best is because they like that undying want to be the best. Yeah. You know, and I'm doing everything I can to do that day in and day out. You know, there's no slacking in the gym, you know, there's no bullshitting around. I mean, when it's time to fuck around in between sets or whatever, but when it's go time, the mood changes, the music changes, the attitude, the environment, you know, and it's, you're just thinking about everything that you want to do. And it's, it's what's crazy is that years ago, when I thought I would never be at this level, and now I'm so close to being even higher level, higher than like, you could have imagined, yeah. right? Yeah, you're talking about uh, one of the you know the highest raw totals in history. That and like some of these guys that have been on top for so long, I'm like starting to edge into their territory mm-hmm. of some of the strongest men in the world. You yeah. Know? So it's I definitely crazy to think that. You know what I mean? Like especially like I was just some fat kid sitting around eating pop tarts uh, and Twinkies and just shit. Just trying to get checks. Watching Judge Judy <laughs> <laughs> and Three Stooges or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a big mohawk and Liberty Spikes. Yeah, I was a punk rocker. I still am. Nice. So what's next, dude? What's next for both of you guys actually? Whoever wants um, to take a break, boo. <laughs> have some water. Yeah, have some I'm water. Part, yeah, I am parched. Yeah, you're parched. I can hear it. Um, <laughs> So as I mentioned earlier, my next uh, physique competition is the Chicago Pro, which is July 6th, which means I'm going to start my prep basically when we get home from the Arnolds. We're going to go there. It's, you know, next month, and uh, I'll have to, like, get it – what is it? Get my jollies in or whatever. Oh, yeah, get your jollies off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She didn't know what that means. I had to look know, it up I and know. show her. <laughs> I never yeah. heard that one. I never, never heard of it. Yeah. Like... So I'll start uh, contest prepping um, right basically when we get back, although – the weekend after the Arnold's March 10th is the throwdown at the compound mm-hmm. uh, put on by the USPA and I'm uh, doing bench only in that uh, was going to do uh, deadlift as well, but I have knee problems also yeah. um, that uh, we decided to back off. Yeah. Bit. It's just not, it's not worth it. You know, when, yeah. and when you're, when you're afraid, you're not gonna be able to train hard mm-hmm. and you're going to end up getting hurt if you go into a lift like with that fear yeah, for sure. so it's just better right now to not do it i mean i'm unlike steve i'm not on the verge of you know setting or breaking any records World domination. So, like, where <laughs> you know where, i gotta think just where are my priorities you know what am i going to be um better at what um you know and just what'll like satisfy me more like yeah. you know yeah I mean, it makes sense to focus more on the on your bodybuilding, the pro card. That's where you're, you know, that that's what your bread and butter there versus <laughs> yeah, going and hurting yourself, yeah, yeah, going for fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I'm excited for that meet though, March 10th, and uh, that's all I have lined up right now. We'll kind of see as time gets closer. Um, you know, if I can 
make things happen, you know, money wise yeah. to uh, get out for another show because, you know, all that prep, you know, 16 weeks just to do one show, a lot of people would say, wow, that's, is that really worth it? You know, mm -hmm. instead you can maybe stretch it out a little longer, get in, you know, two, even three shows all while wearing like the same posing suit too. Yeah. So you get your money's worth uh -huh. on that end as well. Oh, they're so, so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can imagine. I mean, what what was that one you you were trying to get rid of? Was like an, a cheaper one too, wasn't it? One, oh you know, yeah, it was not good. Yeah, that was still like. I was like, man, yeah. you, what? That much for that? Like, dude, I, I got an old wrestling singlet from like high school. Was, Singlets yeah. where it's they're, at, yeah. You know, they're handmade. Or some people call it a onesie. Yeah, so, <laughs> All those jewels, mm -hmm. hand glued. I mean, mm -hmm. I couldn't even imagine like the labor hours that go into those. No, and yeah. Plus, the demand is so high. They mm -hmm. know women. Yeah. They want it. They will pay they for it, or good. they'll find um. You know, you don't have to get a thousand dollar suit. The one I wore for the last three shows I did was custom made, and it was less than three hundred. So I mean, that's like oh, that's not bad. That's do your shopping good. and research. Yeah. Yeah. That's cheap so for I that. found that, and I was I was very pleased with how that turned out, and even just like you know communicating between the like the suit maker, you know, yeah. she was really great. Nice. Yeah. What about you, Steve? What's what's oh, in the man. future? I'm a busy guy right now. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a rundown basically of the year as I know right now. But um, what's coming up? Um, I guess the soonest would be the Arnold's. Um, I'll be at the Arnold's. I'll be competing in the Animal Cage on Sunday, March 4th, against actually a uh, a guy that's in the same weight class as me. He's coached by the same guy. Um, his name is Josh Bryant that uh, coaches us, but the athlete's name is Rob Hall, and we're going head-to-head -head in the cage, 600-pound deadlift for reps until one of us dies, basically. Wow. So, oh. More of an um, exhibition. Though. Yeah, it's an exhibition contest. lift, yeah. but it's um the, the cage, if uh, – I know you guys do a lot of MMA stuff. It's not fighting. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cool, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's really cool is it's a chain link fence, and people are, you know, hanging on the cage. They have little bleachers and stuff set up. There too, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it gets really hyped in it there. Really it's um, like, like an underground fight scene. Almost. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's um actually kind of, like, revered as, like, um like if you get invited to do it, like, you're really lucky. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's definitely a huge honor. It's um by... By animal. by animal or universal nutrition oh, yeah. um, which is a big supplement sponsor yeah. but uh animal they invited me to go against rob who's one of their athletes so i'm going to kick his ass you guys say you have to <laughs> need to fuck him up yeah, yeah. 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 no Just sorry rob quit. <laughs> uh -huh. well, um, a little bit of your endurance though yeah well you saw me pass out so I you know mean, he's i'll go until i die yeah yeah just hold stuff yeah uh. um well, I'll be at the Arnold's. Uh, I'll be making an appearance at the Slingshot booth Friday and Saturday, March 2nd and 3rd, as a guest there. Making an appearance at Powerhouse Columbus to do whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Um, I have a powerlifting meet. My first one of 2018 will be in June at the Chicago Fit Expo. Um, that's where I plan on, you know, doing better than I did last August. So 2,300-pound total is what I'm trying to do. And then August, I got invited to... Only the top three lifters in each weight, weight class got invited to this meet. It's a big money meet. It's a lot of money, $150,000. So, um, yes. yeah, and I uh, actually have a really good shot if everything comes together the way I want to winning the entire thing. Yeah. Um, so that's the goal because I need to fucking pay some bills. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. But um, that's in that's in August, and um, I'll just be uh, hanging out there. That's where I'm going to try to do the 1,000-pound deadlift, um, try to go over 2,400 pounds. Yeah. Uh, which would be by way of a 900 pound squat, a 600 pound bench, and a thousand pound deadlift. So, um, yeah, that would really. I'm already on the map now, but that would really nail me in as like probably one of the greatest ones I've ever lived. So, I definitely want that title. Dude, yeah. That'd be amazing. Sure, you know? yes. Yeah, and then I'm doing a seminar in Florida, um, March 10th. Nice. Doing a deadlift only seminar. So I'm all yeah, over the March place. March 10th, silly. That's really I'm sorry. Uh, March like 23rd or 20. Fourth, I think it is. It's like two weeks after. Sometime, right? in, Sometime March. in March. I, I don't have my schedule in front of me. Where's my assistant? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> assistant with your coffee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just have one last question um, for you guys. Now, what is your is your long term goal? Once you know, it, with any professional athlete, you have to back off from the sport eventually. Do you have yeah. a long term vision for that? Uh, for coaching yeah. Coaching or yeah, definitely coaching. Um, so. Like you said, I know at some point as an athlete, I can't last forever as an athlete, um, is to back off and focus on the coaching aspect of it, other athletes, hopefully pick up maybe some other elite athletes along the way. 
um, to help grow my coaching business from there on, grow the gym a little bit more, and then probably do like some guest speaking and um, you know some more seminars and stuff like that. Podcasting, so, podcasting, yeah, I love you still it. Actually, here's going. You know, yeah, I, I listened to I listened to one with both you guys because I didn't know who a couple of the other guests were. So that was okay. Fun. You guys like oh, where we just yeah. yeah, that's all it is <laughs> is uh. You're drinking beer and wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that was good. I we like we have a good time on there. Like it's not uh, really scripted at all, but typically we know our guests pretty well already. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are other bigger names in the sport. Yep. And um. You know, we just fucking hang out. I make stupid jokes. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> you know, you got to do something you really like. Like once you're done, like you said, with with the sport, yeah. when it's time to walk away and hang this yeah. thing up, <laughs> now it's time. You know, like you got to yeah. find something else. So that's the, awesome. well, the podcast too is actually um, it's sponsored by a couple bigger companies, so yeah. I get paid to do it. That's what I mean. Um, it yeah, seems so, like you have fun with it. So yeah, it's a great time, man. Who doesn't have a good time just sitting around bullshit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the only way people talk anymore. Yeah. It seems like right. Yeah. Where yeah. else would we have like? blocked out an hour just to talk to strangers yeah know, that's right? when you're like we can talk but we have to document this yeah right yeah, yeah. everybody has to know <laughs> just in case you touch me yeah. or whatever. it's it's like i never left the jail it's yeah. like i'm, dep- I'm yeah. being deposed right now yeah. What it is. <laughs> yeah what about you lauren after after the you hang up the the, what do you call it? The brawn panties. Suit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think uh, about that. The and nicer. Like, like yeah. Yeah. Sure you this, like, delicate, like, <laughs> Is it a lace? Maybe it's a lacy one. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to ruin it. Hang up your lace. <laughs> everyone, I think everyone would agree with this statement that bodybuilders can go, you know, as a career much longer than powerlifters. Yeah, than a powerlifter, sure. definitely. So, uh, because it's know, harder as a powerlifter. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You're, you, yes, you are better than me. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I think I can just, ke- I'll keep competing, but, um, <laughs> we joke about this and my, my sisters hear this, they're going to be like, what? I can't believe you said that. Like, I think before I get too old, I might want to reproduce at some point, mm-hmm. you know, maybe breed some super freak athlete. Oh, so man. we're looking for a yeah, candidate if anybody's <laughs> listening. <laughs> if you know any, if you know a guy that's about over 300 pounds that yeah. can... That yeah. can deadlift close to a thousand, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, or, you mean, or you mean you're looking for another? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you're looking for a. We'll, we'll take a... applications. <laughs> or we'll give yeah. out her info soon. Oh, okay. So I mean that's something that you know what I think would be a smart move before it's impossible. Um, sure. And to um, you know I, I have a degree in exercise science and I'm still having like a hard time trying to find like uh like a career mm-hmm. instead of just like all these like random jobs I have. Mm-hmm. So definitely like focus more on like having a sustainable career. Um, so I could, you know, support said super freak. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me. They'll be eating a lot. Because I don't want a sustainable career. I just want to do what I want. I just want to live yeah. on the edge, right? <laughs> yeah. Whatever happens, yeah. happens. I'll, hey, fuck it. I'll make it work. <laughs> yeah, just com- compete in bodybuilding till it's like really just either not fun or just isn't, you know, mm-hmm. starts to just like fade out, you know, like yeah. of my, like my heart. Do you have yeah. any like big goals in bodybuilding at all? Like, um, I mean, I just... I did one pro show last year, and uh, I'd like to right now just I would like to just place better, you know, every time. Um, it'd be great to be top three or five so I can win some money. Yeah. Um, but as far as like going to the Olympia, no, I don't really see myself taking it to that extreme. No. I know, not personally, any of the women who competed at that level, but just from seeing them like online. Um, you know, knowing what they what they go through and stuff, like it's just it's too much. Like it's yeah. a little too much for me. Yeah. So I'm like at ninety five percent. If they're at a hundred, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You know, yep. you know, like, yeah. Like you said, if and if, eventually if you're trying to you know, reproduce and all that too, <laughs> and you, you know, that might that might take some of your attention away from the the bodybuilding for a little bit too. Yeah. So. yeah sure. She will be one jacked mom. That's for sure. That's for yeah, sure. Are oh, you doing the baby workouts? Right. <laughs> yeah, but I'll be in the gym until like the day of. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, totally. she. She was you were deadlifting up until like three days before we had the baby, right? Not heavy, wow. but yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Not pretty late, yeah, but you were. And then back two weeks still. later, or, what, or one week. Later. Mm, I don't know, two or three weeks. Two or three. Yeah, so yeah, awesome. you missed a couple weeks. Like yeah. Waking up now. It's it's the hour. process up. <laughs> oh, baby's waking up. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, you got the monitor. I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. The monitor yeah. There. Yeah. Did you have any other questions for these two? No, I think we covered it all. Okay. Anybody else? Are we good? Yeah, mm-hmm. Nance. Yeah, uncle, uncle in here. Yeah. Cricket, cricket. Are there guests? My aunt and uncle are here. Yeah, <laughs> they know the Steve. Some of my biggest supporters over well. the years. Really? Yeah, That's good. Definitely. Good. Yeah. I mean, Rob talked you up, and then I looked it up. I was like, Oh, Aww. yeah, I've seen this yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank have you so cool. much. For yeah, no, yeah, thanks yeah, for coming, thanks for coming, out. coming yeah, out. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely was fun. Yeah. I like your studio setup, by the yeah. way, too. I got to get yeah. out of my shit here. In the barn, dude. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's even cooler. Yeah. You never like guess, a milk right? house or something. Yeah, there's like goats in here, I guess. Before Cows. we, I, I've never had goats, or, or I think, yeah, you have. Actually, I did, but and it, it didn't froze last. Very long. In the yard. Hey, yeah. Let's not. Let's not. And then, uh, <laughs> oh shoot! Here's what happened. Oops, okay. Daisy. I couldn't get them to come inside the barn, and it was like negative thirty out, and I was like, "All right, I'm done chasing you fuckers around. You're on your own." <laughs> and then, man, they really. And then one that of them was died. It. Yep. Oh my god! Uh, oops. That's so yep. sad. That's Stupid well, goat. Yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't even know what it was good for. <laughs> I shouldn't have even brought it okay, up. Okay, so they they can run, and there's a lot of property out there, and I was like, dude, it is too cold to be chasing you guys. Are you coming or no? And they're, nope. So I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> okay, yep. And I'm like, all right, dude. Fine. Did you eat it at least? You wanted to commit suicide. No. Maybe. No, I got one in, one stayed out. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was it, man. So, uh, yeah, thank you for the depressing <laughs> story. We're ending on <laughs> nothing like ending on a low note. <laughs> All right, man. Well, if anybody's <laughs> looking for you guys on Instagram, but they don't follow you already, it's your. Uh, you can find me at Forsaken Warrior. Uh, my gym is uh, Chicago Barbell Compound, and my podcast, Forsaken Warrior Podcast, on iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud. Thanks. And I'm on Instagram at the Original Fit Girl. Um, I'm on Facebook as well. You could just type in Lauren Quinn and find me there. Sweet. Okay. All right. That's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Thank you.